Good morning, everybody. This is your instructor, Heinz, from 3D Texturing and Lighting class. And today we're going to just do a brief lesson to get you prepared for your next project, which is called Light the Kitchen Scene. So today I want to just talk about materials a little bit in Arnold and uh, how we build materials uh, from the ground up to be what we want them to be. Uh, we can always use the presets as a starting point, but it's good if we dive into the actual settings understand what they do and uh, that'll help you with your materials part of this project. So today we're going to talk about metalness, meaning getting things to look metallic, uh, transmission, which is uh, how we get things like glass and colored glass, uh, and subsurface scattering. This is how we get uh, the appearance of soft plastic where light goes in and bounces around. Uh, so that's what the material setup is going to be for today. Let's kick this off. I've got a scene loaded up here called Material Cubes. You can find this in your week four content under class files. It's just a series of cubes uh, that we can dress up with materials and each one of these is assigned its own Arnold uh, surface shader. So they're all separate. That way we can go in and play around with this stuff. Uh, so. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to have something to reflect and that for that reason I'm going to go and create a sky dome light. So I'll go to my Arnold shelf here and add the sky dome light. We'll set the exposure to 1 and let's load in one of those HDR images to use as a background uh, reflection. So I'm going to go ahead and put a file into this slot and let me go here to uh, the folder and uh, grab this. Okay, so I'm going to use Flower Road HDR file. This is the one I gave you uh, last week. And we'll let that load in. And now uh, what I'd like to do is, I don't necessarily want to see it in the background. I just want to get the reflections from it. So to do that, I can just select the Sky Dome light now. And I'll go to the visibility section here and just turn the camera visibility to zero. Uh, and what that's going to do is turn it off in the rendering in the background, but we'll still be able to see it uh, light the scene as well as give us reflections from uh, that background. So uh, moving forward, I want to create a resolution gate. I want to be able to see my camera. Uh, window here, so I'm rendering what I can see. So I'll go ahead and go up to the top of my viewport here. Uh, this little button here called Resolution Gate, I'm just going to enable that. If you don't like the gray, you can turn that off with the button right next to it. It's called Gate Mask. Uh, I'll leave it on for now. Uh, and I think now I'll just go to my render settings here. And uh, let me get zoomed up on a cube here so we can get a good look at it. So I'll go up to my global render settings and open those up and in the Arnold tab I can check my settings are the defaults right now uh, and I'll turn up diffuse ray depth to 3 just so we get a little light bounce there. And also I want to change the size of my rendering so I'll go to the common tab and I want to make this really small uh, and I can do that uh, by just turning down the width and height numbers here so I'll maybe do 540 by 304. Uh, that way I can iterate these renders quickly without waiting for the render to get uh, done with a larger image. So I want to take a quick test render. I want to check my light direction and we can look at the background and can see that the sun is going to be the light source. So I want to get up uh, on this cube here uh, and get a little bit behind it so that I get some nice shading uh, across this cube here. So just line this up and let's take a quick uh, test render. Go ahead and hit update full scene from the render menu. First time you do that it'll give you um, you know uh, something that uh, is going to update from all the Maya settings and make sure that they're passed on to Arnold. So we'll let this render out for a second. You can see I've got my light coming from the left on this cube here and uh, some shadow on the right. That's kind of what I want. So let's go ahead and build up our first material. This will be like a uh, like a brushed metal. So when you think about uh, brushed copper or brushed aluminum, uh, what we can do is uh, create a material that is be good for things like pots and pans and other metallic objects uh, in your scene. Uh, so I'm going to go to the material now uh, while this continues to finish rendering and you'll notice that 
in the Arnold material, these are the areas that uh, we talked a little bit about, but I'd like to go through in more detail and break these down. So uh, we'll start with a default material. This is what it looks like right after you assign a new shader. And first under base, this is about color. So what is the color doing for this material? Uh, we have a weight, which is basically how strong this is, and I typically just set this to one because uh, we want all the color input from this node. Uh, color is slot here is obvious. This is just essentially picking the color uh, that you want. And so, if I wanted like a, a gray or a silver metal, like chrome or silver, I would kind of do a light gray. I want to do something more like copper or something. Uh, I could go to dial up a more orangey color and then find a, uh, a good value in there that looks uh, like a copper color. So when we're doing metals, the first thing we'll just do is just dial in the color that we want. So uh, the next slot here, diffuse roughness. Uh, we don't use this a lot. This is actually a roughness of the color as opposed to what we know of as roughness for the reflection and the specular highlights. So this diffuse roughness, if you turn this up, it just might have the effect of turning your material a little darker uh, in response to more roughness in the color. So we'll leave that at zero. Okay, this is the interesting part. When you use the metalness slider, this takes over the shading model from specular weight uh, and creates a metallic shading that is more accurate to actual real metal. If I turn that all the way up to one, metalness is gonna take over for uh, the specular shading. And in fact, we can turn uh, the specular weight all the way down uh, color of the base is still going to affect the color of my metal, so if I'm doing a chrome or a silver, I'd make this light gray and I'd make the specular highlight color match that. Uh, in metal shading, the specular color, I usually set to the same as the base color. That helps uh, make it, in metal, the highlights tend to pick up the base color. So if I was doing copper, I might make this like an orangey brown, as well as this highlight color is going to be orangey brown, and that would give me uh, the right shading for, for copper. Uh, so let's take a look at this. I'll just draw a little crop region around this cube here to save us a little time on the rendering. And let's just take a look at what these settings with the metalness at one uh, give us in terms of a look. And you can see that we get a really shiny metallic render from that. And that's kind of the starting point. So roughness is in play here. You can see it's still very low. At point one, this is uh, close to being uh, a reflective mirror. If we want a more brushed metal look, uh, we can turn up this, this roughness here. So let's make this 0.25. And uh, these other sliders here, anisotropy and rotation, tend to let us do directional highlights that can help with a brushed metal look. So I'm going to set both of those to 0.5. And let's just refresh again and see the difference there. You'll notice now the metallic look is softer, it's more like a satin or a brushed metal as this renders out, and uh, that's kind of what we're going for with this material. Again, if I'm doing a colored metal like, you know, copper or brass or gold, uh, I would just want to set the color, the base color and the specular color to uh, match those colors, so uh, that would give you the right result. So this is done now, you can see it's kind of like a soft metal reflection, and that's kind of what we want still some noise here, but we just need to turn up the specular and the diffuse samples uh, to clean that up. Uh, also, just making sure that your sky dome light is set to be uh, samples to three or higher. Uh, and you'll notice also that I rotated the camera uh, a little bit here just so I can get into the shadows and see the reflections a little bit better. So that's why this looks a little different than before. Okay, so let's move on and make some colored glass. I'm going to change my viewport angle here just to give us a better look at this cube. And uh, you'll note I'm not actually using a real camera in this scene, I'm just using the viewport. It's going to make it a little quicker for me to get these done. All right, so uh, we're going to set up a glass material. Uh, your instinct would be to start and create a base color for the glass up in the base area here. Uh, but we're not actually going to need to do that at all because all of that stuff lives down here in what's called transmission. So transmission is light transmits through objects and picks up their color and puts that color in the shadows as well. And uh, that's why it's called transmission. So we're going to take that attribute, turn it up to one. 
that's going to make the uh, object fully uh, transmissive or transparent. Uh, it's going to refract light, so up in the specular value this IOR is called index of refraction. And air is 1.0, but glass and heavier crystals are 1.5 and above. So we'll leave this at the default setting. And uh, let me just go out here and draw. Uh, well, first I'll have to refresh the scene probably here. So let's do that. And you'll see that this thing is uh, already looking like ice or like glass. It's very uh, reflective, but also transmissive, if you will. Now one thing you'll notice is that the shadow is dark still. It's not picking up the right uh, shadow uh, color. It should be very clear, almost non-existent based on this. Uh, and the reason is, is that objects by default are tagged as opaque unless you change that uh, to be correct. So we just need to go back to uh, the shape tab for the object. So if we go up to the top and we go to this shape tab and open up the Arnold settings, you'll notice that checkbox is here. It's called opaque. We want to turn that off anytime we have a material uh, that is fully transmissive or partially transmissive or has transparency. It's basically you won't see any of it working correctly until you turn off uh, that flag. So uh, that'll get us there. Now to make color in this material, notice now with transmission set to one, color is disabled up in base color. Uh, let's make this like a bright blue, make like a blue glass, maybe something like a, a wine bottle or something weird. Uh, so I'll pick a blue hue and I'm going to grab the color and just jam it all the way up. I want a bright, bright saturated color here uh, for this to look the best. And uh, there's also something called scatter color. This has to do with, with light scattering that goes through. Uh, a lot of times I'll just set this to be the same as the... Uh, transmission colors so that uh, those are basically the same. So let's take a look at uh, this rendered area. I'm just going to do a crop region again so we can render this more quickly. And you'll notice now that we're not only getting uh, blue glass but we're getting uh, a blue transmissive shadow from this as well. So light is it's almost like light is going through glass and picking up that glass color. So that's pretty sweet. It's looking good so far. Remember that roughness uh, still applies here up in the specular settings. And if we want, uh, we can give this more of a, a, a frosted glass look uh, by playing around with uh, the roughness setting. So uh, in general, you can see that this glass is also, you can see the interior surface. You can see through it to these other objects behind it. Uh, so that's a really, that's a cool shading, shading technique there. Uh, so let me just really quick turn the roughness up a little bit and let's just see if that's going to do anything for us. I'm going to turn it up to 0.25 like I did with the uh, brushed metal. Uh, let's take a look at that. So you can see this adds just like a little layer of uh, you know, frostiness, if I like to call it that. It's just a little less clear because uh, the surface isn't quite as shiny. Uh, so this will get you into uh, kind of crystal territory and other ones where you see a little bit of light frost coating on those. Uh, so that's kind of the glass deal. The summary of this is, uh, you know, you want to set the transmission to one, set your colors and scatter color and then you can play around uh, with the roughness setting to get a uh, slightly less uh, transparent glass. These other settings we'll get into uh, in a future class, but this is basically the setup for glass. Okay, let's make a orange plastic with subsurface scattering. Uh, this is the technique that lets light uh, kind of go into more light porous objects, so think things like you know flesh or plant leaves or soft plastic or wax, things that let light transmit into the interior, bounce around and come back out, picking up the color of that object. So that's called subsurface scattering. Let's set that up on this cube right here. So you'll notice I changed the camera just to uh, see this cube a little bit better. Uh, I want to make an orange plastic, so I'm going to find a, a nice uh, saturated orange color uh, to use, something like that. 
and uh, I'm going to change my roughness here. I don't want a real shiny plastic. I'm going to change this to like 0.6 and uh, to keep the rest of the specular settings alone for now. And uh, we're not using transmission for this, so I'll scroll farther down to subsurface. This is where those settings live for subsurface scattering. So change the weight to 1 here. We're going to set the subsurface color to be the same orange color. Uh, sort of give us that nice bounced orange color inside there. And this other field called radius is a color. Uh, this has to do with the radius of the scattering. I typically just set it to the same as the rest of the colors, so that gives me the result I usually am looking for. Uh, scale has to do with how far the scattering goes into the interior of the object. So I know these cubes are one by one unit, so one unit across. This is in units, so I'm going to set my scale to 0 0.2. And uh, that means I'm going to see light go in about I don't know, a fifth of the way into that object uh, and create that scattering effect and, and still have a solid center. Uh, and I want to make sure this type is set to random walk. This is the newer algorithm. It works a lot better than diffusion. And uh, that's going to be uh, give me the results I want. So uh, let me draw another crop around this cube. And we will uh, do a render here and see what we got. Okay, so you're starting to see this even though it's really noisy and that's one of the things about subsurface scattering is that uh, we have to crank up the samples on these objects to get these things to look correct um, and clean. So you'll notice already though you can see the light effect working. You notice how it's brighter on the edges where the object is thinner and it's going to be darker on the interior where uh, that object is denser or thicker. So now we're starting to get into uh, the right look for uh, for sort of plastic, soft plastic. Uh, and what I might do here uh, really quick is just set a specular highlight color that's more in that orangey realm as well. That'll help the highlight uh, happen. So the noise is a big factor on this and this is one thing that we have to uh, be aware of. So if we go to our samples, uh, the global samples under the Arnold settings, uh, what we want to do here is increase this SSS number to get this to clean up. Uh, and it actually requires it to be relatively high to get a, a nice clean surface. So something like 10 is <laughs> a good starting point for that. Uh, this is really going to slow things down so I'm just uh, I'm going to show you here uh, the result of the render uh, when it's finished. So I'll refresh this now. All right, there it is finished up. You can see it looks a lot cleaner, uh, which I would hope to be the case with such a high setting on the samples. Uh, but you're really, you can really notice now uh, the scale value that I talked about. So that's sort of 20% into each side or 0.2 out of 1 in the uh, subsurface scatter scale here means uh, you'll see the highlights or the brighter areas where it's thinner up to about 20% in where things will get darker and more uh, thick if you will. So there it is, soft plastic done with an Arnold material. Uh, we're not even into textures yet so we're going to start that uh, coming up here shortly and that helps us create all kinds of variation in color and specular and all that stuff. So let's talk about your project for this week. So for this week, I want you to light the kitchen scene. I'm giving you a Maya file to start with. Uh, the idea here is you're going to use this scene. You're going to create your own camera, lighting rig, etc., to illuminate the scene. Uh, so you get to use any of the topics we've covered so far in class. Uh, feel free to modify the scene, add your own assets, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, this particular assignment is focused on creating what we call good surface or material differentiation. Uh, the idea here is that an interesting 3D scene has a good assortment of shininess levels and reflections uh, mixed up to create the most visual in, you know, interest. So uh, a good example of that is here you can see uh, this is an Arnold render. Uh, it was done a couple years ago and 
uh, this particular scene uh, has a nice mixture of what I call uh, material or surface differentiation. So we have materials that are softer, like the bananas, uh, less shiny, like the countertops, uh, these seat cushions, uh, the wall paint. These are all sort of matte surfaces, but then we have nice metallic uh, surfaces like in the pan and the coffee maker, and then really sharp highlights going on with these glasses and the glass covers down here on the counter. Uh, so a range of highlights, a range of surface feels across the scene is what makes it visually stimulating and interesting to look at, and that's called material or surface differentiation. So that's what I would like you to uh, focus on for this assignment. And I want you to render out one image, uh, at least 1280 by 720. What you get graded on is, uh, I'm looking for creativity and original approach here. So I'm looking at composition. How do you use camera and the lens uh, size and uh, shape? How do you use color and color schemes? Uh, are you pushing extended techniques uh, like global illumination, uh, lighting gobos, uh, ambient occlusion? Uh, try to make you know use of those techniques if you can. Uh, and then render quality uh, of your image and of course the use of surface differentiation. So here is the scene I'm giving you. Uh, this already has uh, some base materials applied, but uh, what you're looking to do here is render out uh, some view of the inside of this kitchen uh, that is interesting. And you have a window, you have a light fixture to use here, uh, you've got uh, you know, the ability to extend this scene if you want, uh, so uh, you can make use of that. So th all of these objects in here have the potential for different levels of uh, shininess, uh, reflectiveness, uh, to break up the surfaces across the frame here. Let's take a look at a couple examples of work that's been done on this particular scene. Uh, this first one is interesting. Uh, good use of color scheme here. Obviously we have uh, some good complementary colors going on. Uh, also nice sense of global illumination uh, and light gradients on these walls uh, and bounced light. Uh, typically when you use bold colors with neutral brighter surfaces you get to pick up a lot of that color bounce which is nice. Uh, ambient occlusion being used as well. Uh, I probably do more with the background window here but it works kind of for this theme, this sort of glowy light casting onto this table, and we're getting good 3D depth from these objects, and good scene depth because we have a foreground plane and a distant background plane. So I, I think that's working uh, pretty nicely. Uh, this next one is kind of about storytelling. Uh, we saw something happened here. Uh, it's pretty cool. I think that we have a nice mix of lighting with this cool light coming from behind the camera that's fill light and we have the fixture like giving us a warm uh, highlight here and kind of drawing us to this quarters or whatever the game was being played. Uh, I might do more with the background so it's kind of blank and that sort of makes the scene feel a little unfinished. Maybe do some uh, like a picture of police lights out here or something to complement the story. And uh, we also have good surface material breakup between shiny sink and trash can and the more matte surfaces of the, uh, the cabinets. Uh, I think the table probably could have used a little more there too. Uh, this one, even though you can see there's some issues like noise, uh, and you're also seeing aliasing. This is that the jagged uh, near horizontal line I was telling you about in the last class. Uh, so this is just about increasing samples, but we have a nice feel of light direction here and the sense of tying it to the outside. And of course, this is hilarious over here, but uh, it's a good sealed up illusion of. Uh, a bright sunset casting warm rays and creating uh, a good 3D fall off across the frame here and a couple mixture of surfaces there. Uh, this one is interesting just because it's a completely different feel and direction. This feels more like a basement room and uh, I just liked the feel of this and the staging of the objects uh, as well as some of these light gradients. We're not getting a ton of material differentiation here but you're seeing a nice glass effect on that. Right. Uh, this one, another storytelling, is kind of cool. Uh, what we have here is a nice color scheme of warm and then cool offset, uh, some volume atmosphere to create some the sense of a little bit of dust in the air. Uh, hard diagonal lines, linear motif is very chaotic, 
chair sort of matches that that sort of idea of something happened that wasn't good uh, and just good 3d uh, fall off and across the scene here so highlight fall off and shadow areas are, are nicely defined uh, based on the light direction uh, of this uh, so a couple more here we just have uh, kind of a fun treatment on the scene here uh, I think we've all been here uh, but some nice highlights on the knobs coming with a trash can has more of a brushed look versus this chrome up here on the paper towel holder a uh, good sense of light coming in from the outside creating highlights in the scene uh, and of course the wine bottle stain on the in key instructions is classic so uh, here's another one that's got nice feel to it uh, I just like the tones that are going on here and some of the surfaces uh, reflections and highlights that are going on uh, this one just does another nice job of making this natural light feel like it's an early morning sunrise in this room and again nice 3d fall off on uh, these surfaces here uh, so a couple more, you know, this just that's a nice uh, lit feel, some bounced light filling in the shadows, uh, and some nice highlights on the subject. So using tone to draw your eye and make a connection uh, to the window. This is another fun one, just storytelling, playing around, bringing in their own asset, and just creating a fun little scene. Uh, I like the sense of depth in this, uh, even though it's very much a horizontal motif uh, the little angle offset from this uh, flying saucer is kind of fun uh, I think there's a missed opportunity with this trash can to put some reflective surfaces here and pick up some of this stuff over here on the can but otherwise pretty nice job on this one uh, people can get real crazy with this scene so here you can see uh, sort of that uh, surreal uh, effect with the alien green light coming in and things levitating. Uh, this big bright highlight is essentially becomes a focal point, uh, but with the character right by it, our eyes make that connection and we can see the closure between these elements here. All right, so there you go. Uh, have fun with that. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, see you next week. Stay warm.